There's a lady in Rihimaki who got healed. Yes. It's a powerful testimony. You, very powerful. You want to share some of the yes, details? Yes, very powerful. I, I, just back in the, this summer, in July, um, this lady went to the meeting and she was really desperate to get a touch from God because she had um, asthma, chronic asthma, she had arthritis, and, uh, and she was mentally ill. Mm -hmm. she, had, uh, she was bipolar and had multiple personalities. And she went to psychiatrists and everything. And she was dependent on medicine to sleep. She could not sleep uh, without medicine. She was to live, she was dependent on medicine. So she was really desperate for a miracle. I remember at the service, I called the sick. So she came forward with her hands lifted up. I just felt such an anointing yeah. to come upon her. She was vibrating under the power of God. So I just, I just asked her what the problem was. And she said all this stuff. So I was like, in the name of Jesus, just be healed right now in Jesus' name. So as we released that anointing, she was like vibrating. She fell under the power. She stayed like on the floor for a long time. And she was like shaking, crying, being really delivered. So as soon as she got up, I told her, you had asthma? Now let's do something. Run. So she started running around the building. Uh, she had no lack of air, nothing. She was totally healed. Her, she could close her hands. She could not do be that before. She was totally healed of arthritis. So the next week, uh, she had a doctor's appointment. She went to psychiatrist. So she started feeling really good. Her sleep was good. Her mood was good. Everything was great about her. So she started talking to the psychiatrist, and the psychiatrist looked at her and said, Wow, you look so different. What happened to you? She said, I received prayer. I received um, the laying on of hands in the name of Jesus, and I was healed. And uh, the psychiatrist looked at her, and he looked at the papers, and it's like, Wow, you, you're really different. Something's going on here. So to make a longer story short, he signed her off medication. He said, you don't need to see me anymore. It was a doctor-conferred miracle. It was awesome. Praise God. That's wonderful. Yeah, so uh, today you are a director of Revival Explosion Ministries, and yes. you are traveling to different nations. Yes. Where have you been so far? Well, I've been to Brazil, of course. We've done a lot of stuff in Brazil, in the U.S., uh, England, Portugal, France, Norway, Finland. With uh, traveling around and uh, taking the kingdom of God. Yeah. Okay. I understand you had just before you came to Finland. Now you were you have had a series of meetings now different cities in U.S. Right? Yes, in U.S. and Brazil too. In Brazil. Okay. Yeah. What happened in Brazil? Amazing, <laughs> amazing stuff. I mean, like, we've seen like hundreds of salvations, people giving their lives to Jesus, and amazing, astonishing miracles, uh, oh. deliverances. We've seen like. Even like metal plates appear on people's bodies. Okay, share some of those stories. That's interesting. <laughs> One guy know? came to the meeting um, in my hometown, and he had, um, uh, I asked him, what's the problem? He said, I have a metal plate on my knee. I cannot kneel down. So I was like, really? So we prayed for him. We laid hands on his leg, and he commanded the metal to disappear. And the fire of God came, and, and uh, he knelt down, he, he do everything he could not do before, there was no pain, and when he touched and he saw it was visible, uh, he could not find the metal plate anymore. And it was a powerful miracle, really powerful. So it just kind of disappeared into thin air. Yes. It was and it was yes. no more. Yes, and One. we saw deaf ears open, we saw demons cast out, we saw the blind see. Um, just that, I mean, three weeks ago. Okay, wow. Yeah. And uh, what else did you do there? You, I understand you helped churches other w in other ways as well? Yeah, that's what we do um, in our ministry. We, we help local churches to train believers, to uh, win souls. That's a, a big thing in our hearts, a harvest of souls. We train them to evangelize the streets. We do street evangelism. Uh, and they see a lot, lots of souls saved. Uh, we did in Rio de Janeiro, we did a crusade. And uh, we saw hundreds of people give their, give their lives to Jesus um, in the meetings and also mm -hmm. in the street evangelism. And then we teach them to pray for the sick. We have, we have schools of training and, and, and preparing the believers to uh, fulfill the Great Commission. That's in our heart. We need to fulfill the Great Commission. Yes. And that burns in our heart. So we are really available to churches to do that. Yeah. Uh, so not, it's not about one man's ministry, but, but mobilizing Yes, mobilizing mobilize the, bo the body of Christ for the fulfilling of the Great Commission. That's what we're all about. It's not about one-man show. It's not about um, 
I usually say that there's uh, times of uh, superstar preacher is gone. It's the time for to, to train believers, to train the body of Christ, to step out in faith and do the works of Jesus. Yes. Well, um, what is, um, what would you say is the key to all of these things happening? I mean, many of us believers, we prayed for sick people and some we may be seeing someone healed. But I mean, it happens so much in your ministry. What is the key thing? Why does these thing, things happen? Um, Why do these things happen? Number one, uh, number one that I would say is uh, surrender yourself totally to God. Just yeah. yield yourself completely. Uh, it doesn't matter your, what people are going to think about you. Uh, I mean, what, what other ministers will say about you. Um, it doesn't matter anything. It's only what, what God thinks and what God wants. So that is a key. Uh, total surrender to the Lord. Yes. Um, I would say cultivate uh, faith in your heart because you have faith, but your faith develops. So you need to really cultivate uh, faith in your heart. How? By, by reading the Word, by uh, meditating on, 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 on scriptures that talk about miracles and on the promises of God. You cultivate that every day. And, and as you... As you uh, meditate as you think about those things, as you dream about those things, and it develops faith in your heart to see the impossible happening. And a life of prayer, of course, you, you're connected to the Holy Spirit. And um, just flow with the Holy Spirit. I, I, I usually say it's not about working for God, it's working with God. Yes. You, you need to flow with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, so... It's important to have him in the house, I guess, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> when you're ministering. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you're... if he's not there, I don't want to be there because I cannot do anything without yeah. him. Well, how do you get his presence? Like, how, how do, what do you do? What's the... Well, like... the Bible says one thing. It's really important, uh, what David says. He says that a uh, broken and contrite heart, Lord, you shall not despise. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I've learned is uh, always... Um, ask the Lord to make your heart soft and sensitive to His presence because when you really worship the Lord with all your strength and being, when you really put yourself in a position of total um, surrender and, and you just say, Lord, I need you. I cannot do this without you. I need you to be with me. When I preach, I need your presence to be upon me and with me. And um, you just put yourself in a position that the Lord can just come and touch you. And he knows, how, he knows how to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I just say um, cultivate a life of, life of faith, a life of, uh, uh, that really focus on, on, the, on, the, on the promise of God. Well, how about we take some more of those wonderful testimonies? They're just so encouraging. Um, just anything you can think of you want to share? Yes, here? I remember one powerful testimony that uh, it's really encouraging. It was really touching to me, actually. I've seen so many healings and so many miracles, but some of them, they, they really touch your heart like yeah. in a greater way. That's the stuff we want to hear about. <laughs> exactly. I remember I was in Rio last year, and uh, I was in a meeting. It was a miracle service, and it was packed. And uh, they did a good announcement and advertised the meeting, and people were coming from everywhere. And there was this mom that brought this girl mm -hmm. who was completely deaf on both ears. And... Uh, and um, she, dr she drove two hours to be in the meeting. Wow. Yeah. I, I mean, even here in Finland, I've seen people who, who drive four or five hours to come into the meeting. That's hu hunger, hunger yeah. for God. That's so true. this lady brought the girl, and she said she prayed before she, uh, she left her house. She said, Lord, I don't want to go there just to watch a meeting. I want my daughter to be healed. So there were lots of people getting healed. I mean, even like one lady that she was, she could, uh, she was bent over. You know, from birth, she should walk like this, like the woman of the Bible, and, and the Lord just touched her bones, and she was, like, able to straighten up. I mean, lots of stuff were happening. And I saw the girl there, and I said, what's the problem? Uh, I came up to the girl and said, what's the problem? And then she, she could not hear me, but her mom said, she's deaf. She cannot hear anything. So at that moment, like, that holy anger just rose up within me. I was like, this is not right. Yeah. This needs to change. Yes. Uh, and I was, became angry at the situation. And some people need, in order for them to have a breakthrough, they need to get angry at yeah. their situation. And uh, I just declared, and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command these ears to be open right now. In Jesus' name, be open. So as I was 
standing behind the girl, I told her to close her eyes and I was snapping my fingers. She began to snap the fingers. She was hearing everything. So I began to whisper and she began to repeat everything I was saying. And uh, so she, she, was, she realized she was hearing. She started crying, like crying, crying, crying. And so her mom went crazy. She's like jumping. They both hugged me. We went jumping. The church went jumping. Everybody was praising the Lord. And I was amazed that the, the girl was totally healed. And the good thing about it, uh, I came back to Rio this year in June. And I met the girl and her mom that came to see me. She's totally healed. She's hearing perfect. The doctors confirmed the healing wow. and said, well, she's not deaf anymore. Something happened. And they, they told the doctors it was Jesus. So I love that. I love yeah. that, uh, glorifying the name of Jesus. Yes. That's what our wonderful Lord does. Yes. That's the way He is. Well, are there any words, last words you would like to share with our viewers? Anything? Yes. Um, it's good to be here in Finland. I really love the, the people, the culture, and the food, and everything. Um, <laughs> and I know, I, since the first time I came here to Finland, I felt uh, really... Uh, something in my heart that is stirred, that God has something special for this nation. God wants to invade this nation with His power and with His glory and His presence. We've been experiencing uh, great meetings here in Finland. Like We've seen lots of miracles, lots of salvations, deliverances. I just want to encourage you, if, if you live here and if you feel the call of God on your life, I want to encourage you to pursue it with everything you have because the Lord wants to use you here in your nation. Um, you... Maybe you have prophetic words, you have uh, dreams, you have uh, things that the Lord has placed on your heart. I just want to encourage you, uh, do not uh, be shy about it. Do not be uh, discouraged by anything. Just, just step out and do it. It's, um, we're all about activating people to their call. So I just want to, I want to encourage you, if you have a call from the Lord, if you feel your heart stirring for the harvest, I just want to encourage you, um, look for a place, look for people to connect with that really have a heart that you have and just uh, follow the call, just obey the Lord and just uh, step out and into your call, into your destiny. And uh, I just want to wanna, wanna say that uh, I want to release a blessing over you. I want to uh, speak the life of God and the power of God if you're sick in your body. I just want to uh, release that healing, the name of Jesus. We've seen people healed in, in, on radio, on the internet. So I just want to release that in the name of Jesus, every sickness, every disease. I just release the power of God through this screen in the name of Jesus. Be healed of your sickness. Be healed of your disease. Amen. Just receive the touch of the Holy Spirit. And Amen. I love you guys. Well. <laughs> Thank you. It was really interesting talking to you, mm. and it's a blessing to have you here. Awesome. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Kitos. Ole <laughs> hyvä.